within practically every electronic instrument, there is an oscillator of some sort. The task of the oscillator is to generate a repetitive waveform of desired shape, frequency, and amplitude that can be used to drive other circuits. Depending on the application, the driven circuit may require either a pulsed, sinusoidal, square, sawtooth, or triangular waveform. Perhaps the easiest type of oscillator to design is the RC relaxation oscillator. Its oscillating nature can be explained by the following principle, charging a capacitor via a resistor, and then discharging it, when the capacitor voltage reaches a certain threshold. The cycle is then repeated continuously. To control the charge, discharge cycle of the capacitor, a wired amplifier with positive feedback is used. The amplifier acts as a charge, discharge switch, that is triggered by the threshold voltage, and also provides the gain to the oscillator. Assume that when power is first applied, the op amp's output goes toward positive saturation. The capacitor will begin to charge, up toward the op amp's positive supply voltage, around plus 15 volts, with a time constant of R1 times C. When the voltage across the capacitor, reaches the threshold voltage, the op amp's output, suddenly switches to negative saturation, around minus 15 volts. The threshold voltage, is the voltage set at the non-inverting input, which is equal to the threshold voltage, set by the voltage divider is now minus 7.5 volts. The capacitor begins discharging, toward negative saturation, with the same R1 times C time constant, until it reaches minus 7.5 volts, at which time the op amps output, switches back to the positive saturation voltage. The cycle repeats indefinitely, with a period, equal to 2.2 times R1 times C. There is another relaxation oscillator, that generates sawtooth waves. Unlike previous oscillators, this circuit resembles an op-amp integrator network, except for the feedback loop, with the programmable unijunction transistor. The main component, that oscillates this circuit is the put. Let me explain how this circuit works. Let's initially pretend the circuit shown here, does not contain the put. In this case, the circuit would resemble a simple integrator circuit. When a negative voltage is placed at the inverting input, the capacitor charges up at a linear rate, toward the positive saturation voltage plus 15 volts. The output signal would simply provide a one-shot ramp voltage, it would not generate a repetitive triangular wave. In order to generate a repetitive waveform, we must now include the put. The put introduces oscillation into the circuit by acting as an active switch that turns on, when the anode to cathode voltage, is greater by one diode drop, than its gate to cathode voltage. The put will remain on, until the current through it, falls below the minimum holding current rating. This switching action, acts to rapidly discharge the capacitor before the output saturates. When the capacitor discharges, the put turns off, and the cycle repeats. The gate voltage of the put, is set via voltage divider resistors R4 and R5. The R1 and R2 voltage divider resistors set the reference voltage at the inverting input, while the diodes help stabilize the voltage across R2, when it is adjusted to vary the frequency. The output voltage amplitude, is determined by R4, while the output frequency is approximated by this expression. Here the 0.5 volts, represents a typical voltage drop across a put. Here's another simple dual op amp circuit, that generates both triangular and square waveforms. This circuit combines, a triangle wave generator with a comparator. The rightmost op amp in the circuit acts as a comparator, it is wired with positive feedback. 
if there is a slight difference in voltage between the inputs of this op amp, the V2 output voltage will saturate in either the positive or negative direction. Let's say the op amp saturates in the positive direction. It will remain in that saturated state until the voltage at the non inverting input drops below zero, at which time V2 will be driven to negative saturation. The threshold voltage is given by this expression. Now this comparator is used with a ramp generator. The output of the ramp generator is connected to the input of the comparator, while its output is fed back to the input of the ramp generator. Each time the ramp voltage reaches the threshold voltage, the comparator changes states. This gives rise to oscillation. The period of the output waveform is determined by the R1 time C time constant saturation voltage and the threshold voltage. PAMPs are not the only active devices used to construct relaxation oscillators. Other components, such as transistors and digital logic gates, can take their place. There is a simple relaxation oscillator that is built from a Schmidt trigger inverter IC and an RC network. Schmidt triggers as seen in the last video are used to transform slowly changing input waveforms into sharply defined jitter-free output waveforms. When power is first applied to the circuit, the voltage across C is zero, and the output of the inverter is high plus 5 volts. The capacitor starts charging up toward the output voltage via R. When the capacitor voltage reaches the positive threshold of the inverter 3.5 volts, the output of the inverter goes low to 0 volts. With the output low, C discharges toward 0 volts. When the capacitor voltage drops below the negative threshold voltage of the inverter 1.5 volts, the output of the inverter goes high. The cycle repeats. The on-off times are determined by the positive and negative threshold voltages and the RC time constant. The second example is a pair of CMOS inverters that are used to construct a simple square wave RC relaxation oscillator. The circuit can work with voltages ranging from 4 to 18 volt. The frequency of oscillation is given by this expression. All the relaxation oscillators shown in this video are relatively simple to construct. Now, there is even an easier way to generate basic waveforms. The easy way is to use an IC, especially designed for the task popular square wave generating chip that can be programmed with resistors and a capacitor is the 555 timer IC. And this is what we will look at in the next video. If you have a wish topic or a wish circuit, then please just write us comment. Thank you for watching and please subscribe for more videos.